Well, I've been speaking to the actor Hugh Grant, who's one of the leading figures in the Hacked Off campaign, demanding stronger regulation of the press, and the media lawyer David Price. And I began by asking Hugh Grant what he wanted as a bare minimum as a result of Lord Leveson's report. The public now feels there was a YouGov poll um, just recently, the front page of The Guardian today, saying that 80%, 90% of the public believe that the press can no longer be trusted just to regulate themselves that they need, like every other important industry in this country that has the power to harm people or damage them, it should have an independent regulator backed by statute. And, and what is the point of statute to force all the press to join it? it? Well, unfortunately, it's meaningless without statute because people like Desmond, uh, owner of the Express Group, which perpetrated some of the worst abuses, will just say, we're not joining. And, and what's wrong with that? Um, well, I think there's enough regulation in this country at the moment without further regulation. I mean, Hugh refers to this que these questions that have been placed, uh, were put to the public this morning, um, published this morning. But the, the bottom line is that the press is regularly regulated by the law. Independent judiciary regulate the press. We have laws of libel. We have laws of privacy. We have criminal sanctions. The press is over-regulated as it is. And the fundamental thing about a free press is that it will be subject to abuse. Freedom brings with it the potential for abuse. This has been recognised for centuries. That's well, why, why do you think an independent that's... regulator would make any difference? Because um, the, the non-independent regulator, the the, the uh, self-regulatory -regula system, in other words, the press marking their own homework, stood by while things like that were happening. If you have no confidence in press regulation mm. and in the police, mm. why would you have any confidence in a bunch of government-appointed, great and good, on an independent panel? I just say well, well, because, they've, they've, because independent regulation has done a good job in other industries. We, we did it to the, to the banking industry, we did it with MPs, we've done it to uh, all kinds of industries. They must, they must have regulation if they've got the power to harm British citizens. You're dealing with freedom of speech here. This notion that you can cut out the cancer and best bent and twisted journalism and leave something which is really nice, the non-abusive speech, is wrong. It's been disproved throughout history. It depends. That you have to have... May I say something now? Yes, of course. I'm you sorry. have to have some breathing space for freedom of expression. That that will necessarily involve some form of abuse. So the press has to be free to be abusive, is what you're well, saying? Yes. But it, I would it, say, it, but, who's okay. free? Who's free? Because I don't think it's individual journalists who are free. But that's why the NUJ, the National Union of Journalists, campaigns on our, on our platforms. It's, it's what you're talking about, what you're defending, is freedom of speech for large corporations to, to abuse people for their own financial and their own ideological ends. I'm talking and about that's an a completely absence different thing. of regulation. An absence of regulation available to everybody. Media, concentration of media ownership is a completely different issue. Whether the police ought to prosecute it is a completely different issue. What's happening here is that there will be strict regulations that will come in which will affect anybody who wants to publish anything of any size. No, it doesn't. The... No one's saying that. Of course it will. No. Anyone who wants it's for to... big corporations. Well, no one, well, no one has you, ever suggested. How do you define a big corporation? What's your what's your minimum size? Well, you'd have to have some kind of metric of maybe income or readership or something like that. That's not beyond the wit of man. But no one is suggesting that you you regulate what someone tweets or what someone says on their no. on their little blog. But the best way of ensuring true freedom is to have absence of restriction, absence of high levels of entry into the marketplace so that you encourage as many people as possible to express themselves. I mean, the outrage of this started when the, the, the hacking of, of the dollars was, was revealed. W what makes you think that an independent panel of regulation would have stopped that or would stop that in the future? Well... I mean, that was a criminal offence. That was a criminal offence. And what stopped that, as I said before, was that the police were not doing their job. And government, as it has done for the last 50 years, looked away because it's terrified of these massive uh, media corporations uh, who basically dictate policy in this country. So shouldn't if, you be campaigning people... for the police to do their job rather than a new regulator, is what I mean? You, you, I have to campaign for a new regulator and, this is the other crucial bit, and I hope that it's in Leveson's report, he has to do something about um, plurality of ownership. It's not right that the Murdoch organisation had 42% of our media and was going about to get a whole lot more. That turns us into Berlusconi's Italy. Well, hold on, it's a very dim view of the British public, that we're somehow controlled by the media, that we're so influenced by it, that people can't make up their mind, own the mind the who they want to vote for, what decisions they want to make in their life because of these big media, media moguls. Well, the British it public me... bought the news of the world and didn't yeah. care about any of these Yes, scandals. well, I mean, the starting point of freedom of expression should be the interaction between the person who wants to impart information and the person who wants to receive it. But the British and, public and, and the, and the overwhelmingly pub... have said 
that they've now rumbled that, that a lot of the press is basically a, a protection racket for, for bullies and big corporate masters. Well, what, what, that, basis, that's, what that's basis, what, what's your basis for saying that? Well, the public have got a, a, a healthy disregard of, of journalists and always have done. I mean, if you go back to the American Constitution, when you look at someone like James Madison, who was scathing about the press, but said, nevertheless, we have to put up with these noxious branches in this tree in order that the tree may continue to flower. Well, what the, do you the, say to the family that, that Hugh Grant just cited, of the boy in Switzerland? you know, who are being harassed. You're saying, well, that's tough. That, that you know, with, with the good goes the bad, and we've got um, to live with it. I'm saying, no, I'm saying that in that particular situation, we can debate individual situations. In that particular situation, there are, there's harassment, there's privacy laws, which are accessible to anybody, and which regulate the press through an independent judiciary. But, but I do, say, I do say that you can't have a free press without there being some abuse of it. That is the price of freedom. So there's no point in wheeling on all these people who may have suffered, genuinely suffered. And I act for claimants. I've acted for claimants for years. So I know about this. So you say to Chris Jeffries, you're just the price of a free press. Well, in, but you will be called a murderer, or, or, or basically, what, by, by, by the tabloids. On one view, and you say to the... The, to the McCanns, well, you know, your diary being leaked into the tap, that's just the price well, of a free the, press. The, there is, well, first of all, they've both had substantial compensation for what's happened, so the law has operated, forget about an, an external regulator, the law has operated to give them redress. Nobody thinks that Chris Jeffries uh, was guilty of, of, of murder. Uh, the newspaper was not only had, had to pay, the newspaper was not only had to pay up for libel, they got done for contempt of court. The McCanns received substantial compensation. Hugh Grant, I mean, I that's mean, the law that, working, isn't the it? The law doesn't always work. Take the case of the, the Watsons, Jim and Margaret Watson in Scotland, whose daughter was murdered. Uh, two publications, one newspaper, one magazine, ran articles implying that she was in some way responsible for her own murder because she was a bully. Because she was deceased, she, they couldn't sue. The PCC was utterly useless. And they've had to live with that for 20 years, these victims. But... You also represent the newspapers. Is the majority of your work representing newspapers well, or representing claimants? Let's not go down this route. We can Why not? Ask, because we can start asking who's finding hacked off. I'll tell you, actually. I mean, I have not campaigned at all on this issue. I have not spoken in the media. I've come here because I believe in freedom of expression. That's why I'm doing it. You'll see that I acted for claimants for many, many years. Sure, but it's... I, I'll answer the question. I act for a huge amount of individual defendants who get sued for libel. I also act for the Telegraph and I act for the Independent. But they have had no say in me coming here at all. Who's, I think who's it's funding very you, unworthy Who's funding hacked off? Start to attribute we, we... a bad motive to me that somehow. No, I, I, I think it's to do with the fact I think that it's I important. I think it's important I'm when here. people dress themselves in the finery of this free speech well, argument to just make sure. Who's paying for hacked off then? Who funds hacked off? It comes off? from a number of sources, how a number of donations. How much are you funding, Hugh? Of About twenty thousand quid I've given them so Max far. Max Mosley. None. Zero. Well, who are the people? Why don't? Why aren't you, but why are you open about the people who fund these organisations? Because they get attacked by the people you represent. They get attacked by the Daily Mail. They get attacked by the Sun. They get attacked by the, the, well, the, the, the Daily Express. They, they, they're too scared. To, to declare themselves. That's the kind of democracy we live scared? in. I mean, what, what's there to be scared about? An article being published because saying there's a massive vested off. interest on the part of powerful media organisations to preserve the status quo. But you're so saying they can that rich to people the can fund a campaign that may result in a change of the law and stay secret. If that that doesn't if sound very democratic be, either, does if it? If they're going to be attacked, they have to do that. Just, just finally, what's at stake here? For, how will you judge David Cameron and how he decides what to do? What's at stake for him if he gets this wrong? Well, I think he's politically compromised, and the whole, the whole Leveson inquiry is a political act. So um, I, I don't, I'm not as au fait as the politics as someone like Hugh is, who's been campaigning and been meeting the politicians. But I think uh, Cameron will probably try and find a way out of it, which doesn't involve statutory regulation of the media, but it won't involve him getting too much flack. Uh, I think he's in a difficult position. He's... No Prime Minister has dared in the end, whenever this issue of press abuse of citizens has come up in the last 50 years, at the last moment they've all chickened out and said, oh, well, you can have one more chance at regulating them yourselves because that's the politically expedient thing to do. But he has promised at Leveson that he will look after the, the victims. The victim have said, have victims have said we want an end to self-regulation. The public is saying that, 80 90% in the polls. The Labour Party is saying it, the Lib Dems are saying it, 40 Conservative MPs are saying it. So he's going to be in a very odd spot if he doesn't enact what Leveson recommends. Hugh Grant and the media lawyer David Price talking to me earlier. And of course we'll have full coverage of the Leveson findings tomorrow online and at 7 o'clock.